Hi, I'm Dr. John Berkness. I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon at the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. I, sp I specialize in the care of patients with spinal deformities such as scoliosis. Today I'd like to demonstrate the proper examination of a patient with scoliosis in the hopes of elucidating some of the pitfalls that can lead to false positive exams. Scoliosis affects the spine in the coronal plane of 10 degrees or more. The spine normally should be straight in the coronal plane but should have some gentle bends in the sagittal plane. What I like to say for scoliosis is that it takes the straight spine and makes it curved but it takes the curved spine and makes it straight. What it also does however is affect the axial plane and what that does is it causes rotation of the spine. So if you can imagine up here in the thoracic part of the spine where the ribs are attached and there was some rotation of the spine there that's the fulcrum of this rotation and the whole rib cage will rotate up. You'll end up with what's called a rib hump. The Adams forward bending test takes advantage of that principle. The first step to examining someone with scoliosis is to simply observe them from behind. The patient turns away from you. What you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that their knees are locked, that their arms are by their side and relaxed. The first thing you're looking for is shoulder asymmetry. Oftentimes a scoliosis will manifest itself first as one shoulder being higher than the other. The next you want to look for is any obvious curvature in their spine when you're just directly observing it. That oftentimes can be hidden very, uh, very nicely by kids with a significant scoliosis, so you can't judge it entirely on that. Next you want to look at their pelvis. You pick, take your hands and your fingers and put them right over the iliac crest, the top of the pelvis, and then you look at your hands and they should be even. If one pelvis is higher than the other, that oftentimes can happen because one leg is longer than the other with a leg length discrepancy. The Adams forward bend test takes advantage of that axial rotation. What I like to say when you're performing this test is to pay attention to the appendages that are attached to the spine. In particular, we mean the head, the arms, and the legs. If you're not very careful about those, they can give you a false positive. Let me demonstrate with Madeline. What I'm going to ask Madeline to do is make sure that she's standing with her feet close together. We want to make sure that her knees are locked we want to have her put her hands together just like this, fingertip to fingertip. And then what I'm going to ask her to do is just bend straight down, looking straight down at her feet. We want to make sure that her knees are locked. What we're looking for normally is to make sure that the rib cage and the shoulder blades are symmetric, that one is not elevated relative to the other. If you do have scoliosis and the rotational plane is affected, one rib cage will be higher than the other. Unfortunately, you can get false positives. For instance, if Madeline were to turn her head and look that way, that can cause this shoulder and that rib cage to elevate in this direction and give you a false positive. So you really want to make sure they're looking straight down. Alternatively, if one arm dangles down more than the other, then that can cause the rib cage to elevate as well. Lastly, if one knee is locked and one knee is not, that'll cause the rib cage to rotate as well and give you a false positive. So before you even do your examination, you want to make sure that all of those three things are in alignment and then be looking at the spine. I hope this video was helpful in elucidating the proper examination of a patient with scoliosis and preventing some of the pitfalls that can occur during that examination. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 757-668-7990 or email me at john.berkness at chkd.org.